Hi, I'm Freddie Isaac and I'm doing plastic recycling. We'll see where these go in a minute, but first I'm going to explain the science to you. Before we see where the bottles go, I need to explain some of the science to you. Polymers are long chains of repeating units. These repeating units are called monomers. This is the start of a monomer. It can then be created using a, a peroxide to create a radical reaction, breaking the double bond shown by these two Lego blocks. This then creates a radical like this and reacts together with another one of these, opening the double bond and joining together. This is called an addition polymerization. The addition reaction mechanism that I talked about earlier is used to create HDP, one of the two main plastics that is recycled. HDP is a, DP is a thermoplastic, meaning it can be melted and reformed. This is why it's so easy to recycle. This is the ethene molecule, as I talked about earlier, and it's broken to create a, a, a radical using peroxide. HDP is used in milk bottles, hip replacements, American football pads, and a wide range of products. This is an example of a 60 unit length polymer. This is, for example, HDPE, which is what I showed you uh, earlier. Uh, as you can see, this is far longer than a, an individual monomer and what you'll find within the plastic bottles. HDP standing for high density polyethylene. Tell me when. PET is one of the two main plastics that is recycled due to its thermoplastic nature. This thermoplastic nature means that enough heat can be provided to break the intermolecular forces between the polymer chains, but not break any of the covalent bonds within the polymer chains. PET is created originally from condensation polymerization of tetraphthalic acid and ethylene glycol. Condensation polymerization is when two monomers join together and give off a small molecule, normally something like water. This repeats so it goes what ethylene glycol, tetraphthalic acid, ethylene glycol, tetraphthalic acid. It's a lot harder to demonstrate, however. PET has far fewer uses than HDPE and is mainly just used in the plastic bottles like these two. I got so wrapped up in the science that I forgot to talk about this man, Hermann Strodinger. He came up with the idea from polymers in a groundbreaking paper in 1920. This was after looking at the now known polymer rubber, though it flew in the face of convention at the time. This is the first site the plastic bin bottles are taken after I put them in the recycling bin. They are moved around and sorted using this trommel to hopefully separate dirt and bottle caps and cardboard apart. They are then moved around by conveyor belt and initially sorted, as well as hand sorted. They are then separated up into different types of bottles and moved to a different, more specialist site at closely recycling. Here the bundles of different type of bottles are taken and moved inside the facility, where they are broken up and separated between PET and HDPE. This trommel here is used to split the caps, the dirt, as the caps and the bottles are often different types of plastic making it hard to recycle. They're then sorted through a number of different ways, both high-tech and low-tech, simply hand sorting. They're then moved on onwards to um, a hot bath um, where they're actually started to be moved into flakes. The HDP and PET are then split. The colours are cheaper than the clear, so they're split away and resold on. As you can see, there are a number of The property that allows HDP and PET to be separated at the same plant is the fact that one floats and one sinks, as demonstrated in this video. HDT, HDP sinks to the bottom, whilst PET floats to the top. Therefore, they can be separated easily in the same plant. That is what the rotating panels in the video earlier were used for. There are a number of elements in the not mentioned in the video. For example, the bath with the paddles in it. Is extremely hot and acidic to break down the dirt that is built upon the flakes. There are pa powerful electromagnets above some of the conveyor belts to remove any metal bits, with air jets to blow away paper and plastic bags also on the conveyor belt. Plastic bags you might think are recyclable, but they are not HDP or PET, which this plant has specialised in. It is also also, within the uh, hot acidic bath, it is the stage at which HDP and PET flakes are separated. As demonstrated, recycling is all well and good in theory. However, there are some issues. I've touched upon the transport issue, but 
The, trans the issue with transportation is you're burning lots of fuels to transport the plastic around between different depots and just to simply get it to the recycling factory. Is this environmentally efficient? Well, you need to balance that out between does it fill up landfill, etc. Another issue rarely discussed is that the flakes can only be recycled about five or six times. This is due to the high heat used to break the intermolecular forces. It also breaks some covalent bonds in the polymers. Once enough of these bonds have been broken, the polymer length becomes too short to be used as a plastic and loses all of its properties. The transport issue and the flake degradation issue are my two main issues with recycling, which in my eyes is a great idea other than those two major flaws which need to be overcome if we wish to progress. It keeps plastic out of landfill, it lowers the carbon cost of plastic and it's simply cheaper to recycle plastic than to dig crude oil up from the ground. I hope this video has interested you and made you think about polymers. I'd like to thank Closely Recycling for some informative videos and my sources can be found in the description below.